Hey there, welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of our entire second season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be chatting about something, large format photography. Today, I'm not out in the field. You can see I'm back in the studio here, kind of pre-recording things up. And it's because I've just finished and I'm still in the process of testing out a brand new piece of kit that I have wanted to make for probably the last five, six years. And that is an LED UV light source. Uh, it's actually marketed as like these LED black lights, but you can use specific UV emitting LED lights to create an alternative photographic process light source. Alternative photographic processes typically don't use silver gelatin and they use a variety of other uh, metal salts and non-metals to expose and make a picture. A lot of these processes require heavy amounts of ultraviolet light, which require long, long, long exposures. And they're also contact printing processes. This means that your negative is the finished size of the print. There's no enlargements unless you make an enlarged negative. And you can do this uh, by using an inter negative, or you can just scan it and print one out with an inkjet printer on some transparency material. I opted for the former because I've been shooting 8x10 and it's great. I can just contact print it and 8x10 prints are, are lovely. Anyway, I wanted to make this printer forever and the price used to be pretty exorbitant and you had to source things from all these vendors and then you had to get the soldering iron out and it was just, you had to set aside like a whole weekend to even just kind of get started making one of these printers. And it wasn't until a few months ago, I noticed there was a blog post by Mr. Tim Layton, who's another great large format photographer. I'm gonna drop a link below to the blog post I'm talking about here in, in today's episode, where he built a pretty simple update to his previous alternative photographic process unit. The unit he was using before used uh, BLB or black light bulb uh, fluorescent tubes, and those were kind of the go-to light source for DIY alt process, unless you wanted to buy these big, uh, vacuum form plate burners that use really expensive and dangerous UV emitting bulbs. And they were just a lot to maintain and you had to have a special power supply. This looked like, whoa, he did this on the cheap. What did he use? So in Tim's article, he links to some of these Barina T5 LED UV light tubes. So these are little tubes that are about the same size as certain fluorescent bulbs known as T5s. They're about two foot long. Each of them draws nine watts, and these ones are specific. They are narrow spectrum UV LEDs. This is important because LED light strips that you could go buy at Best Buy or Micro Center, oftentimes those will be white or RGBWW, which means although they're color accurate, uh, they're emitting a broader spectrum. And when you narrow that spectrum, you're getting less emission, but you're getting emission for exactly that wavelength you're looking for. And the alternative photographic processes, depending on what you want contrast wise and exposure wise, you're gonna need light between 365 nanometers all the way up to 420 nanometers. Uh, I'll leave that up to the experts to test which is best. But the ones Tim recommended were 395 to 405, which is a pretty good spectrum for a, a large range of alt process. So I went ahead and bought some of those on Amazon. A four pack of these two foot bulbs was about 30 US dollars. So I bought two of those and I didn't even need to buy plywood. I remembered when I went out to my shed, there was still some leftover built-in cabinets from this unfinished crawl space uh, when we bought our house. So all I had to do is pop out one of the sides of that panel that was gonna become the front, and it was about 24 by 34, measured it out. I could space out these T5 tubes, all eight of them, and get about a good 16 by 20, maybe even 20 by 24 printing surface, which is perfect. The assembly was just as simple as Tim says in his blog. It was just a matter of popping in some screws to hold on these little metal, they're really thin aluminum T5 brackets. Get those in there all nicey nice. Running the cables, do a little bit of cable management, make sure they don't pop around. The cables they ship with are as long as the units, about two foot long. So a lot, there's a lot of excess left over. But the nice thing about this, these are essentially tape lights that have an aluminum standoff, also known as a heat sink, and these little kind of covers that make them look like fluorescent tubes. Uh, I don't think they act as lenses, but they do dissipate the heat pretty well. So they just pop right in. If you're not somebody that is really electronic savvy, wants to get out the soldering iron and just kind of go to town on wiring and figuring things out, this is a great DIY thing that you can do. Uh, you can chip away at over the course of a weekend, or if you're really hardcore, you can finish in a few hours. 
Most of it for me was just kind of getting the shop cleaned up and getting the space ready. And once I was done, the actual amount of labor was probably around one, one to two hours. It wasn't that bad. And I'm sure somebody that's actually handy could do it a little bit faster. I did, you, you will see me in this B-roll using an impact driver and a drill, but by no means do you need to use those. You could probably even just like hot glue some of this stuff. I've seen some alternative process tutorials where people were like hot gluing uh, these different lights to it. Today's episode is brought to you by you think I'm going to say Squarespace or some other thing. No, it's Mirage.com. It's my website. If you go to Mirage.com, there's a little print section. I sell prints. By the way, if you've already ordered a print, thank you so very much. It goes a huge, huge way to fund the channel and crazy hijinks like what I'm doing in today's episode. So thanks. A print purchase goes such a long way to helping support the channel. It says, hey, I like what you're doing. And I also want to have something to put up on my wall. So yeah, buy a print, Mirage.com. I'm gonna throw a link up there. Now for the hard part. Let's actually get this unit fired up and see if we can't make some prints. One of the tricky things about printing like this is they require different chemicals. Sometimes they're more controlled chemicals or more expensive. I opted for the process that I had the easiest access to and that was cyanotype. Cyanotype for me is always kind of that like first alternative photographic process. It's the one I recommend first because it's relatively inexpensive. There's ready-made kits that ship as a part A and part B, and the development is not very nasty at all. The worst thing you'll be doing is maybe adding a little bit of hydrogen peroxide or vinegar along the way, but your main developer is water. It just rinses off. So you mix equal parts A and B. In my case, I did two mils of A, two mils of B, sloshed them around in my little shot glass and started coating. I had some leftover Fabriano Artistico, which is like the good stuff. You don't need to use that. You can probably just use any watercolor paper. That'll be great. Some watercolor papers will have a bit of a tooth to them, and some will be really nice and smooth. I like the Fabriano because it's super smooth. It's the hot press. Anyway, double coated that. If you get a little impatient like I do, you can hit them with a hair dryer in between coats to kind of speed up that process. But the big thing is, this is as soon as A and B are mixed up, you are UV sensitive. So you shouldn't have any fluorescent lights on, preferably just incandescent lights to coat everything. That's why the lighting is really low key for this B-roll. Once I got to doing that, it was time to test out this unit. I had no real reference for what this unit would be exposure-wise. Uh, in Tim's blog, he points to having really fast exposure times for platinum palladium, but I wouldn't just be able to port the times he was using for platinum palladium to cyanotype. Typically, cyanotype takes forever, even in bright sun. So I started bracketing off exposures in little test strips uh, in the 20 to 30 minute range. I'm actually in the middle of running my last print here, and I'll hopefully be able to show it to you guys here in a few minutes. And that one is running at 45 minutes, which, oh, that sounds forever. But here's the cool thing. That little box, the total, like my total cost is more time than anything else. There's less than $100 in that entire LED setup, even adding the fancy little handles and hinges and stuff. So my final exposure times are floating between the 30 to 45 minute range, depending on what type of negative I'm working with, how, you know, how dense it is, uh, what kind of contrast I'm going with. And admittedly, it has been five, six years since I've done any alternative photographic process. It may have actually, when was the last time I did cyanotype? The last time I did cyanotype was probably eight or nine years ago. So it's been forever. I'm just amazed I got anything. I took two separate negatives. Uh, both were from the Ohio Uninterrupted series. One was like a really foggy morning at uh, Saltpeter Cave, which is an awesome state nature preserve. And the other one was from down in uh, Cincinnati area. I can't remember the name of the preserve off the top of my head. But those are the two prints that I made with it today. And yeah, $100 for a UV exposure unit that can handle up to 20 by 24 negatives or maybe multiple. Probably the more convenient thing would be run multiple eight by tens or even multiple 11 by 14s at once. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. If you guys have any questions about alternative photographic processes, or if you just want to see more stuff like this, have you tried alternative photographic processes? There's so many of them. What's your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments. You know, this is like one of those, just when you feel like you're getting into something and you're starting to understand little, little pockets and pieces of it, just like this whole other world opens up for me. That's all process. It's a creative, creative process. I think that's one thing that we can all use a little bit more of, some creativity. Anyway, if you have any questions about the large format photographic process, you can always feel free to shoot me an email, large format questions 
at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by, and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.